thank you for joining us for another segment of uh, Future of Blockchain, Ryan. You're welcome. Really Good to be here. It. Thank you. Yeah, so you know, I'd love to start off and ask, you know, how do you make your way into the, the wild world of crypto? <laughs> it was great. Yeah, I was back in uh, 2013. Uh, I think I had uh, read the Slashdot article for the second time mm -hmm. and had come back and said, oh, yeah, why, why didn't I read that before? Oh, this starts to make sense to me, but wait. The, the, the cryptocurrency, like that, the, how does that actually work? And it was it was this idea of autonomous systems being able to all arrive at the same answer. So, um, my, my background came from computer science and business, and so I had a lot of understanding of networking and blinking lights and how systems move data around. And this idea that they could actually come to the same answer independently and then derive something of value uh, collectively was really what drove me to it. Hmm. Uh, and then it was uh, listening to some early podcasts, uh, Dan Larimer, Charles Haskinson, out there talking about alternatives to proof of work and saying, well, are there other ways that we can arrive at consensus uh, without uh, doing this uh, hard mathematical computation? Can we do it in a different way? So that was what uh, kind of drew me in I initially, and uh, I got into to mining and said, oh, let me teach my... My, my boys about uh, how we can run statistical analysis about mm -hmm. what's the performance of this, uh, uh, this, this GPU card versus the other one. We mm -hmm. tweak these parameters and so that's how they learned how to do uh, graphing within Excel. Yeah, you're still actively mining? <laughs> no, no, no. It's uh, uh, after, uh, after it got to springtime, uh, my wife said, why in the heck is it so hot in this yeah. house, you know? And I said, oh, yeah. And, and she also knows the electrical bill. Yeah. So then, no, no, we, we, we moved on from that. Cool. Well, sounds good. Um, so tell me a bit about the, the current project you're working on, um, and kind of what are you guys hoping to achieve with it? What's the, the problem you're solving? Right. So I, I'm with the BitShares project, and this is a financial services platform that's implemented as an open source uh, blockchain. Uh, and what we're, what we're trying to solve, I guess, is... Uh, financial services uh, offering. So we have a token issuance platform, and then we also implement uh, an exchange mechanism. Mm -hmm. And we also have uh, an, an interesting uh, voting mechanism to allow uh, any individual who wants to contribute to the project to have a way to earn tokens uh, out of the, what we call the reserve pool, out of the blockchain and be paid. So the way that uh, my team are paid is actually by the uh, funding that exists uh, within the blockchain itself. Hmm. Yes, yeah, so it's a very different type of organization. Maybe you could talk a little bit about yes. know, how you guys work together um, and yourself, you know, leading a, a pretty key role in terms of coordination. Maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah, this is absolutely the, the craziest organizational structure that I've ever worked within, but it's also very, very exciting. Hmm. Uh, so this is a fully decentralized, autonomous community, and by community, mm -hmm. really that is the those individuals that are holding the, the BTS token, the core token of mm -hmm. our protocol. Um, now, what I do uh, in, in my team, I, I lead the team of core developers. So we're a group of 10. Uh, we, we have uh, individuals that uh, actually hold, I think it's eight different passports. Uh, mm -hmm. They're in six different countries around the globe, and they are uh, designing, maintaining, and implementing the protocol, and that would uh, that that that's everything that has to do with the financial services platform, the APIs, um, the the reference wallet that that allows uh, individuals to hold those tokens, and then the smart contracts, which are all executed uh, as part of the consensus layer. So, how do we? Um, how do we want to do token issuance? How do we want to represent our order book and do the order matching engine? So all of that is defined in the code. That's what my team uh, work on. And then we have other teams that are within the community that are building, if you will, the pretty stuff on the front end of that, built on top of that, that have a graphical user interface, a mobile wallet, uh, and different flavors of uh, trading interfaces to, to meet different types of end users. So what's been your biggest learning in running a community like that? Uh, yeah, how, how do you how do you meet uh, together when everybody is distributed uh, around the globe when when you don't have uh, a lot of time? You know, nobody is well. Not very few of my team are actually you know here in the eastern uh, in the East Coast time zone, right? I've got lots in 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 Europe and and some in Asia as well. 
uh, so getting some of that coordination and then which tools are we going to use? We're, we're an open source project, so of course most of it, li well, all of it lives in GitHub. Mm -hmm. uh, and then our communication platform uh, is primarily Telegram if we're going to mm -hmm. do kind of real-time chat. Um, but we had to find mechanisms that were also secure channels as well. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've made use of tools such as uh, Keybase as mm -hmm. well so that we yeah. can have secure communications. Uh, but we need to be transparent in, in what it is that we do. So, uh, so we do put uh, as much of our conversations and notes inside of GitHub so that our community knows what it is we're working mm -hmm. on. Obviously, all the commits are there, so it can be reviewed and yeah. um, used by our block producers when it, when it actually goes into production. Yeah, great. And so um, if you guys as an organization are uh, you know, looking forward and you feel like you've met success, what does that look like? Uh, well, a secure protocol, number one, something that we know that the value that exists there is cannot be um, taken away or uh, marginalized by any other ex external actor. I think that mm -hmm. security and performance are certainly some of the things that we are m mostly focused on at that base protocol layer. When we look at kind of the future of, well, what do we want to do with this platform? What, what can it do and what's possible? I'm, I'm very keen to figure out ways that we can get and represent other external assets, uh, mm. other, other, <laughs> excuse me, other digital assets that exist on, on other blockchains and get them actually represented mm. inside of our decentralized exchange. So when I look at what Arwen are trying to do with their platform or, or with their uh, trading protocol, yeah. I should say, they, this really makes sense to, uh, to, to me and BitShares because we have a decentralized order book and order matching system here, and we, our protocol allows then for businesses to build on top of it. And so that's what we've had thus far is that uh, gateways have come in and said, well, we will issue tokens on top of the protocol and then allow those to be traded in, in our order book. And so those are representations of that gateway's um, Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. So there are markets that are specific to that gateway. But what our one would allow is that we could put the actual end user's Bitcoin into a payment channel and then have that represented actually inside of our order oh, book. So gotcha. we could have truly trustless traded of uh, order matching and everything of uh, external tokens and the end user would actually feel that, well, would actually hold their tokens uh, throughout that process. Very cool. And so. Um, if you could paint the future um, for you guys, and you know, what, what does it look like? Yeah, what, what does it look like? Well, uh, hope, hopefully it's bright. Uh, I mean, in, in a decentralized uh, organization, yeah, it, it, it's up to whatever those token holders say they want to fund uh, today yeah. or the next day, right? Uh, I, don't have a, I don't have an employment contract. You know, mm -hmm. It's up to the will of uh, how I perform as an individual and certainly the delivery of my team. Uh, so we continue to collectively look f forward to what what's possible, what can deliver more value to the token holders. I mean, that I guess is who we answer to, right? Mm -hmm. You know, part of our mission certainly is to grow the value of the underlying token. That, that that'll benefit everybody, and I think that we do that by looking at what are other projects doing. And certainly, we look at Bitcoin specifically for well, what are the developers putting into there? And hash time lock contracts was the most recent thing mm -hmm. that was very, very interesting to us because it will allow us to talk to those other blockchains. I also think that the Interledger protocol is another yeah. protocol that makes sense for us to be able to communicate in a tokenless way, in that case, uh, to other uh, blockchains or other stores of uh, value, value networks around as well. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, so if you're ready, I'd love to jump in the rabbit hole. Yes, all right. Okay. Uh, Top factors hindering blockchain adoption? Uh, easy use, end user, just stone private keys, just being able to, uh, what do I do with this? It's, it's, I will lose my value. That, I think that's the hardest thing, user adoption, and it's, and it's scary, and it's different, and people will lose their value, and then they're turned off by yeah. it. Hardware, software, uh, when it comes to law. Uh, probably a combination thereof. Uh, th th certainly, the har hardware wallet is uh, extremely important, but not something that you're able to carry around for petty cash, if you yeah. will. Yeah. Cool. Um, biggest strength of an autonomous organization? Mm, uh, probably that they that that it's 
well, that they can't be mm, regulated, that there, that there isn't the yeah. ability to put the thumb on w any one individual. Just like, yeah, cool. Uh, biggest pitfall of a uh, autonomous organization. Uh, who's in charge? Uh, yeah. Who do uh, you know? Who who do I talk to to get uh, authority to do something? Cool. Um, scalability. So, when do you expect scalability to be solved? Uh, I think that the BitTrace protocol does it uh, I in a novel way, where where we can do. Um, well, we, we have a published paper that says we can do 3,000 transactions per second, so I mean, we, we have the ability to, to do that. You know, what, what's it going to take to do it in, in proof of work chains, uh, in, in other types of adoption uh, it is, I don't, I don't know, I mean, maybe, maybe we don't need it. Maybe it is just a, lay, uh, a series of interconnected blockchains where each one is most efficient at doing what they're best at doing. Hmm. So we, we, we may not need to solve scalability on a chain. Okay, good. So uh, not layer one, not layer two. Mm -hmm. Or do you have well, preference for either? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, maybe ask a question. Yeah, again. Where, uh, where do you expect scalability to be solved? Layer one or layer two? Or is it just best of class for each? Uh, I think that the layer two components are very, very important, yes. Uh, and I think that, w I think that it is, um, I think that you'll see layer two to layer two interoperability is probably where we will see the most uh, scalability efficiencies across kind of a, a, a broad blockchain ecosystem, if you will. Uh, those that can can affect uh, layer one to layer one, uh, that that's you know fantastic, and there's probably uh, less security vulnerabilities in there. Uh, but it, but it certainly wouldn't be as fast as layer two layer two. Good. Uh, switching to mining uh, mm. today, too centralized, too decentralized. Uh, too centralized, yes. Okay. Um, do you think the average person can participate as a miner? Uh, yes, but they're, uh, but I mean, they're just they're just directing their hashing power to a mining pool. I mean, the, the individuals do not turn on a mining rig in their basement and do anything other than piss their money away. <laughs> cool. Uh, so, do you think mining is becoming more uh, centralized or decentralized? <sighs> it's. it's Stagnant. I, uh, we don't see. I don't. I don't observe a lot of variants in the the big, if you will, five mining pool conglomerates. You know, that, that, that they maybe it moves around within them. Maybe one comes out and something else comes in to replace it. But it does seem to be kind of maintaining in that eight five to eight uh, mining pools controlling the vast vast majority of uh, hash power. Good. Um, Regulation. So, do you, do you think it's clear in the United States? Unfortunately, no. Uh, we keep n knocking on the door of the SEC to give us some more clarity about what what, what this looks like. I'm, cer I'm certainly very very keen to understand. You know what, uh, as a software developer uh, team lead, you know, not even the guy writing the code, but you know what what are my personal liabilities and and, and what are the liabilities of my project and my uh, team members as well? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, do you think? Regulation and the lack thereof clarity is hampering innovation? Yeah, certainly. Uh, I, I think that there are many, many entrepreneurs that are uh, in this space that could do more and more quickly if there was more definition to uh, around, the leg uh, around the regulatory and compliance uh, pieces of it. I think that in investors would come more quickly if they knew that they were not going to just you know, see their investment uh, taken away from them. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Uh, ICOs, are they dead? Uh, in the form that they were offered in 2017 and 18, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, the, the the security token offering is uh, to, is is coming. I mean, the, we we have to find a way to make a digital representation of a. Uh, of a security offering, and I don't think that there is any reason why SEC wouldn't be supportive of, of, of doing that if we simply have more clarity around what that um, what that framework needs to be. Yep. Um, exchanges are there too many or too few? Mm, I mean, there, there, there's money to be made in being an exchange operator, certainly. So mm -hmm. if, if if competition says that there's room for n more, then then they will come. Uh, it would be nice to have more liquidity. A fewer would be would be nice to have more liquidity in in, in a in a single or, or fewer number of them. But uh, wherever market makers can 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 make their margin, I think is what we'll see. Let them make it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, the final question would be: uh, coolest project 
That's not the one you're working on. Hmm. Well, I mentioned Arwen, and, uh, and, and clearly I think that is, is exciting uh, because we can tie into it um, in a ledger protocol again, so, just so that we can tie to any number of other projects. Oh, it's, it's so hard nowadays to, to, to keep track on it. In 2013, I could read all of the white papers <laughs> that were coming them, yeah. out, and, and I can't read you know, all of them anymore. Yeah. So. Some of the good velocity, but. Yes. Cool. Ryan, really enjoyed it. Good. Thank you for Thanks being so here. much. Yep. Appreciate it. Thank you.